All right, this is a 2011 Altima Power Steering Pressure Hose Replacement video in which I'm going to caution you, uh, you know, do not try this at home. This is a, not the typical DIY project. Uh, in particular, you will have to access this from underneath the car. And I'll show you in some videos um, that are out there already. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to walk through a couple of videos and show you some key points. You know, use those videos as your, your sort of baseline, uh, depending on which technique you're going to use. Uh, and then I'll put a couple of uh, clips at the end of little things that you might want to consider. Um, just I want to caution you that there are two considerations that I would make before attempting this as a DIY, DIY project. First of all is do you have access to a a full car lift. Um, I'm going to show you a guy who did it on jack stands. You know, you'll have to decide whether you're willing to uh, accept that level of risk. Um, if you do it on a proper uh, vehicle lift and where you can safely get under the car, uh, you can do this project. It is uh, not easy, but it is. Uh, it can be done. And uh, the second thing is, and I know this may sound silly, but if you have large forearms, um, you know, from your wrist to your elbows, if you're one of these big hulking dudes, uh, you may physically not be able to do this because the access uh, area is uh, pretty tight. All right, this is the Duralast kit that I got for the 2011 um, Nissan comes with a packet that has some crush washers, a rubber uh, gasket, ring, whatever. Uh, looks like some type of plug right here. Uh, if you look at this, there are two videos that I'm going to reference in the link below. One of them is the TRQ uh, demonstration. very good. The other guy is, um, the, the quality of the camera work is not quite as good, but he does address um, a different uh, portion of this, and that's we'll talk about this right here. So when you're watching the TRQ video, uh, he's going to disconnect the um, power, the pump assembly right here. Uh, later, he's going to salvage the pressure sensor, which goes on the other side of this guy right here. Um, there's a there are rubber gaskets here, here, and here with clamps assemblies that he salvages. And he comes in and inside the car, he disconnects this and he pulls the hose assembly out, puts it back in and inside the car, you know, this part that I'm holding right here never gets uninstalled. He just brings it back in and threads it back in. The other video, uh, he pulls out the hose and this pipe assembly here because he reaches back deeper into the car, undoes this, pulls the whole assembly out. So each video is um, pretty good, but it helps to kind of understand the, how all the parts fit together to look at it out here on the countertop and to compare the two videos depending on what you're going to need to do with yours. All right, after listening to my disclaimer as to whether or not this should be a DIY project, let's start with a couple of videos that you need to be aware of. I'm not going to show you in this video all the gory details of how to do this because there are numerous videos out there of various quality um, in their you know videography. Probably the best one that I saw was the TRQ 1A Auto uh, video here on how to replace it for a 2007 to 2012. So mine was a 2011. This was very consistent with what I saw underneath the car. The second one, I'll, and I'll put this link down in the, in the comments. The second one was uh, that I looked at was from Part Shooter, and the quality of the film wasn't as good. Um, but he does show uh, a second way. There are two pieces to the hose assembly, and I'm gonna break that down uh, in a later segment where we look at the hose. 
and he took out the entire hose assembly plus the high pressure um, pipe uh, tube whatever you want to call it that goes over to the steering assembly so um, this one the TRQ one at least the one that I looked at um, only takes out the hose part it leaves the uh, aluminum pipe that's going over to the steering intact and so you have to approach from uh, the disassembly part you have to approach them differently so I'm gonna pull the screen up here in a minute so you can sort of see where they occur in the video so you can focus on it but uh, these two videos will show you, for simple terms, the two basic approaches to getting this assembly out. The hose and the clamps and the, uh, if you take it out, the uh, high pressure uh, tubing. This one right here, uh, this is just a search page. I should have well, probably, well, I say I should have watched it. I did come back later and review this and this one here from uh, from Jules is um, in the middle is the quality of the you know camera work is n not great. It doesn't go through all the steps, uh, but if you it the thumbnail shows one of the things that you need to understand about this version of this particular DIY task. As I mentioned in my introduction, I don't. I don't see how you do this at home. If I'd watched this video right here, I probably would never have attempted that because I personally don't feel uh, safe. I don't care what you do. I don't feel safe having a car up on, you know, 18, 20 inch jacked up like that. Um, it's just too many ways for something to go wrong underneath there. And you have to get under the car. I, I, unless you have the arms of an orangutan, uh, you know, <laughs> and you can reach six feet into the, uh, into the car and you have 10 fingers on one hand because you only have room for one arm but you need two hands in there um, I don't see how you can do this from the side of the car from where the wheel well of the car so you have to go underneath it and you know just looking at that photo scares the hell out of me he's a braver man than me um, so fortunately I had uh, access to a whole car you know garage you know professional grade lift and uh, for free and a friend of mine has it so i drove it over we put it up on the rack lifted it up i you know i went under it it i was completely confident in the safety of that rack right it had uh, ratcheting latching locks and the car was very stable i mean we pushed you know when we took it six inches in the air we pushed very hard to make sure that it was seated properly on the on the lift and it was it was solid as a rock um and so we lifted the car up to you know five six feet whatever it was and i crawled underneath there and i was able to get access to the um the, the line hose and the and the the tube assembly which we'll take a look at in a minute so the problem that I have, if I have a problem with these guys right here, these first two, it's that they really don't convey, or or maybe I just missed it. I, I don't know. I've watched it twice, but it's on a rack, and you don't, you kind of don't even recognize that it's on a rack. And he doesn't, he doesn't tell you, okay, I'm going underneath the car now, and the way you access is, you know, it's you come up here where the uh, O2 sensor is, and you know, you stick your hand in here. It, it's just he goes from being out here in the wheel well to suddenly you're looking at the uh, connections, and specifically, we're talking about where this connects right here. This portion right here connects out. Uh, we're pretty close. It's right underneath this little flap right here, um, behind the uh, the strut and the in the rotor here. You take this piece of mud guard out and it's right up in this general area right here well this hose this goes up um you know I, I don't know why it goes all the way up but it loops up and then it comes back down and about halfway through the car this end links up with a tube assembly which we'll look at in a minute and it proceeds all the way over to the driver's side where it connects into the steering assembly and you know i'm not a i'm not a mechanic i don't know the proper terminology but that tube assembly um, is 
you can take this thing out. You can take out just the hose by dis by you know disconnecting the tube assembly and leaving it intact, or you can leave this uh, tube assembly connection right here, and you go all the way over to the driver's side and disconnect it from whatever the power you know the power steering assembly on the driver's side. I don't know what what you call it. Um, so I'm going to pause this and then I'm going to move this footage here to point out a couple of things. Okay, so one of the things he's going to do is have you take out this piece of plastic right here, you know, take the wheel off. And you can see here in the photo, it's on a, it's on a lift. And okay, you, you, under, you understand that, but you don't really appreciate that you have to have it on a, a lift. Um, it just comes across as he's doing it for convenience when the simple fact is it's got to be on a lift and my god that is nasty okay so this little piece of plastic is going to come out well if you're on a lift you don't have to take the tire off um, if you raise the car up and turn the steering wheel all the way to the left so that the rear edge of the tire is sticking out i was able to get up there without actually taking off the tire Yesterday, when I was down on the ground, I took the tire off. I took this piece of plastic out here, this mud guard out right here. And right up in this general area is where the uh, pressure sensor and the, um, I think they call it a bozo bolt or whatever. It's, the, it's where the uh, hose connects into the pump. It's all right up in this general area. You don't have to take this piece off. You don't have to take the tire off. Um, if you're on a rack, you can just simply turn the steering wheel and come in from the, the passenger rear and up and forward. Okay, so take the tire off by all means. It, it does give you, you know, more room to work with if you want. Take this off if you need to, uh, if it helps you see things better, but it isn't really necessary. Now here you're looking up basically from that front where he had taken that uh, plastic uh, mud guard off. You're looking up through there. And you got to get this uh, disconnection uh, done. It's one of these where you got to squeeze the little clip and pull it back. It's very difficult. I actually had to use uh, um, a, a, a pliers uh, to squeeze and pull. Be very, you know, be careful when you're getting this off. You don't want to break that ho or that line right here. You can replace the sensor if you need to, but you don't want to do anything to damage the wire or the connector. Uh, if you can avoid it. Uh, the sensor can be salvaged. You don't have to um, replace it, but if it does get damaged, it, it can be replaced. So here you can see again from the sort of the front um, passenger side, looking up through the, in front of the shock over here and in that gap, this is that bolt you're gonna connect to. Here's the sensor. When you get this hose out, you can unscrew this and salvage this sensor here. Now here at about a minute and 10 seconds in, he's he has now shifted from underneath the car up on the dry, uh, passenger side and he's reaching down in to get the clamp that holds the uh, hose up behind the engine block. Um, you'll see where he's sticking his car there, or his arm, there is a, uh, um, I don't know, metal you know, bracket here and the engine's right here. And so there's a tube here, which I'm gonna show you in a, a little bit later in the video that you can remove. I think it's the, I think it's in a vacuum tube. Um, you just disconnect it and sort of tuck it out of the way. And that makes a lot of extra space in here to work with. There's even then there's not a lot to work with, but um, if you temporarily remove that uh, hose, tuck it up, clip it up here with a zip tie or something, you'll have a much better time of getting to the bolt that he's gonna show you here in just a second. Okay, now this camera is looking from the uh, driver's side toward the passenger side, and you can see he's reaching, uh, you remember where his arm was coming in from the passenger side, he's reaching around, and there's a bracket here that has two bolts right here. They're at the same level, so the second one is right behind it and it's hidden. And then there's a bolt right here holding this uh, bracket right here, and this is the hose. So you're gonna have to get your, you know, a 10 millimeter uh, on the back side of this thing. Now he's gonna use a um, ratchet, and I used a ratchet. Um, if you have a 
10 millimeter ratcheting socket. I think that will be a little bit better. You can see where he's putting his finger. That's down here where this little clamp is. That's where it's going to be um, the one that you want to take off. So you can see you can get one of those stubby um, uh, ratchets in there, but if you have the ratcheting box end, it's probably a little better. Back under the car, um, he's going to dis take off. This is that high pressure hose, or what I'm going to distinguish between a hose and a tube. I don't know what the terminology for it is, but this is the high pressure hose that goes over. And so you're now under the car uh, looking up. Um, this is, if you when you get under there, this is, uh, I don't know, like a cross, a cross tie or whatever. And you're looking up in there. And so you are not looking at this from... The, the wheel well, right, where he took the tire off. You're actually seeing this from underneath the car. Um, and the, it says it's a 24 millimeter and I think a 19, I don't remember exactly, but if you watch here at two minutes and three seconds, that's the start of this segment right here. He's gonna take another wrench right here and this wrench and he's going to, you know, do a lefty loosey around here and try and loosen this up. So I'll run a little bit of it here just to, so you can see what he's going to do. The top of the line. And he is a 14 millimeter wrench to remove this. Nut. All right, and then he's going to do lefty loosey. Now, what he just did is he edited the film to show you how damn difficult it is to break that thing free. The bottom line is I tried for 10 or 15 minutes and I could not break this loose. So I finally ended up going with the second technique, which is to go to the other end of this tube right here, which is further over on the passenger or the driver's side. And I'm going to use the technique from the other guy and take the entire, the entire hose and tube assembly out. Uh, while we're here, he's going to, in the video, he's going to take this bracket off. The other video, there's some bolts down here that guy is going to take off this entire bracket assembly. So what I'm going to recommend that you do, if assuming you're coming from underneath the car, is I would go and I would remove this bracket, which takes this this um, uh, you know metal whatever this bolt holding this metal bracket right here with this rubber um, bushing. Okay, I would take the 10 millimeter. It's at the very top. I would take the 10 millimeter out leave the bracket in place, unlike what the other guy does. And once you take this 10 millimeter bolt out, this whole, you know, you basically just pull this thing free and the hose going that direction and the tube going off toward the driver's side uh, will come off as one complete assembly. Here you can see that he was able to get the uh, thing, this, uh, the bolt, the this threaded, you know, tightener, fastener. Here's a beveled uh, interface that seals up with it. The next step is going to be uh, to go after the bolt up here. And whether you use this technique and disconnect here, or whether you disconnect over at the driver's side, still only pull off this top bolt right here. Now he's going to spend a fair amount of time to get out of there, get it out. Now you see Serge just popped it loose. Okay, and now the hose is free. Now in this video up to this point, the TRQ video, he's removed the primary connection over at the pump area, the, the sensor, the primary connection. He went on top, came in from above, and released that 10 millimeter uh, bracket that's holding the, the hose uh, on the back side of the engine, and then he just disconnected the um, the tube from the hose and took that 10 millimeter bracket out. And so he's basically pulling this thing out right now. And from there, he's going to salvage the rubber um, bushings and the the clamps at each end and put them on his new new part here. And then he's going to go back in and basically reverse the process. Okay. Now, 
a little bit later, the next thing you probably need to know is he has the procedure for, uh, I'm not going to call it bleeding, but he, you put the fluid in and you move the uh, steering wheel back and forth. I, I did it half a dozen times. And if I had it filled almost to the top when I started doing my cycling from left to right and back, I did six, you know, back and forth, full back and forth. And it sucked about two thirds of this reservoir out. So it didn't completely drain it. And then I filled it back up to the top mark where it's uh, recommended and closed it and it's been holding ever since. So this video here, uh, those are some of the key, you know, takeaways from his, uh, the, the 1A Auto or the TRQ video. Now, this video here is the second technique. Um, basically, he's doing the same stuff. You can see the camera works a little, a uh, little less. So now, notice that he's looking from the front. Here's the shock. He's looking from the passenger front back into the the. You can't really see from here, but right up in here is where the sensor and the primary connection is. And if you about a foot further into it is. Here's that clamp that goes over. Here's the, the 19 millimeter and the 24 millimeter that the TRQ used, and he broke the assembly right here. Here's the, the other end of the hose that loops up behind the engine and comes back down here. And then here's that 10 millimeter bolt at the top. Now, when he gets to working on that thing, here, yeah, so here you can see the hose now right in here is where that sensor and the and the main uh, connector to the pump is so he's going to walk his way through there uh, it's kind of messy he's going to clean it up now here's the part that i wanted to show you in this footage more than the other here's the break point from the trq video right here okay he you know unthreaded this guy back to back broke it apart took this guy out and then grabbed this assembly and pulled it off to the pulled it loose and he already had the the top uh, re, uh restraining um bracket and he had the main connection over at the pump back over here uh loose so all he had to do is pull that hose out well this guy is going to take a slightly different approach so here's the tube and it goes down and around and back over here and it comes uh to this i think it's this one right here um now I'm gonna let it play for a, a second here. Line going to the pump loosened up. I'll uh, show that. Here you can see and the fluid you'll see my dripping hand from where he took out the uh, by the intermediate shaft bolt. towards the rack and pinion over. It's a 14. So I don't know if you can see it, but he's taking this bolt off right here. So he's taking this bracket plus this bracket off. I took the one at the top. I, I did most of this guy's technique where I come in here and I loosened it here because I could not, nothing that I did work to, to break this. It was so seized up. Um, I could not break this. That was my original intent. And once I got underneath, it was actually easier to access this. This is a much easier technique to use this. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. But I took this bolt right here out. That way I had a rough, you know, anchor point. When I put the hose back in, I knew where to, physically where to put the, uh, you know, the hose assembly, it was just, it was, to me, it was a little easier to take this bolt out. He's taking out this bolt. Okay, whatever works for you. Now, here's the part where he's come, <coughs> excuse me, he's coming in from the front, it looks like. And you can see his wrench going down there. I couldn't get this angle, but coming from back underneath here, I was able to get access to this bolt pretty easily and maybe my arm was there and my wrench it was forward i don't know maybe my wrench might have been in the same position but um i was able to get my wrench in there pretty cleanly actually um get the shortest 10 millimeter uh what's it 10 or 14 i can't remember um i think it's 14 millimeter now the thing to note about this is this was so much easier for one simple reason. Here, I had to provide both directions, right? I had to pro provide a wrench that was holding this in place while I pro provided a second wrench to torque 
to lefty loosey, right, to unthread it. So you had to get both your arms up in there, and you had to get two wrenches up in there, uh, and it kept slipping off. And I, I don't know why. I don't. I don't think it was the oil. It felt like it was like stripping the, you know, the shoulders of the of the nut there. Couldn't see any stripping, but I could not get this uh, this assembled. And part of the reason is because you're trying to get, like I said, two hands and two wrenches up in this area. Uh, you can do it, but it's it, you you definitely have to be underneath the car to do this. Now this one, you still have to be underneath the car, but the assembly that this thing is screwed into is solid as a rock, right? So all you have to do is lefty loosey against a, a, you don't have to provide the counter torque to get it off. So this turned out to be, for me, I, I fiddle farted around with this, I don't know how long, trying to, you know, get it out. And finally I said, well, let me give this a shot and see what happens. And it came right out. Um, now it was, it was in there tight and <clears throat> It it had it required um, a lot of cranks, and you're only getting about an eighth of a crank at most on you know on some of these throws. So it was it was fairly tedious, but it wasn't particularly hard. And there there did come a point where by applying a little bit of um, upward pressure on this assembly, I was able to you know, use my fingers and de-thread, uh, well, right in here, de-thread it uh, once I got it, you know, started. Now, in coming out was harder than it was putting it back in. Uh, so, um, I took this guy out right here. I took this bolt out right here. I took the bolt out up above that connects it uh, behind the engine block. And then I took the sensor, which is like, like kind of, here at the front edge of the frame out, the disconnect of the sensor, took the 24 millimeter junction bolt or bozo bolt or whatever they call them. Um, and the assembly, the entire assembly came out. And this portion right here was all connected. So this is, uh, the reason I'm showing you this video, uh, both of their videos, is so you can see the two different areas where you can get it out. And this is actually the easier of the two. At first, now this is about six inches further deep, so you cannot reach across the car from the wheel well. The camera's coming in from the wheel well, and it makes you think, oh yeah, I can do that. But um, unless you have really long arms, and oh, by the way, um, if you have really thick forearms, if you're like some big brute of a dude, you might not be able to do this because the, the the places that you're coming in from underneath um, are pretty tight. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a skinny dude, but I'm not a, a hulking dude either. And, and so when my arms were, I mean, I had to jam my arms in there and it's, you know, squeezing my forearms uh, just to get far enough into the cavity here to work. So, you know, that's another consideration. If you're, if specifically, if your forearms are huge, you probably can't do this um, yourself because it's, it's a tight fit in some of these um, access areas. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to add a little bit of footage at the end here of, of, to show you a couple of things that are helpful. But if you come back out, um, you know, these two videos right here uh, are really good videos in terms of the, you know, this one's a quality, really quality video. This one shows you the other technique, uh, splitting here versus taking it out of the uh, power steering assembly, whatever. Um, but this one shows you, and it's scary to me, but this one shows you here in this middle picture how high this car has to be off the ground. Now, could you get away with a little less or maybe a little more? You know, yeah. I'm not ever going to get under a car that's jacked up like that personally. So that's why I come to the conclusion that uh, if you're serious about doing this, um, find a local shop that has a rack where you can rent the bay for an hour. It it actually took about two hours to do this because it's uh, tight working areas. Um, just, you know, you got to have all the right tools. 
Um, it, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not, right? It's like one connection at one end and another connection at the other end and two retaining bolts, one up behind the engine block and one sort of at that, the junction area of the tube and the hose. You think, what, four connections and disconnect a sensor? Uh, how long can that take? Um, it can it can take a while, a, a while. You, you know, if it's the first time you've ever done this. Now, if you do it every single day, maybe you can knock it out in 15 or 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever. But if you're, you know, if you've never done this before and you're trying to figure out how to get at it, um, I would anticipate two hours. Okay, so I'm going to move on now. I'm going to append some footage uh, from out in the car just to show you some of the considerations uh, up close a little bit um, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, again, thanks to TRQ 1A Auto, their video, you know, uh, this was going to cost me 500 some dollars at the local shop um, and they were going to replace the hose and the sensor and I was like, well, watching these two videos, it's like, okay, you can salvage the sensor, right? And if you have a, access to a rack for free or for an affordable price, you know, you can actually do this. If you're doing it at home and you're you're the kind of person that's comfortable getting under that car there in the middle, uh, have at it. But um, please, you know, make sure that that car is safe. That, that scares the hell out of me. Okay, so uh, on to some final footage and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, probably the easiest way to get the top um, bracket that holds the power steering hose up uh, behind the engine over there is to come in from the top from the passenger side and the problem is notice this hose right here it's in the way what you need to do is put your hand in and come around from the back side so i remove the uh pressure clamp here and slid it back and disconnected the hose and then I'm going to bring this up and tuck it out of the way okay now you can see there's a much bigger cavity and I can reach back there much more easily so that's that's pretty significant um, work saver so this is a close-up of the top clamp where the hose goes up and arcs over behind the engine. And you can see here that here's the top bolt. There's another bolt right back here, the, t the two that are, um, you'll, you'll notice those first. If you then drop your finger down here, you'll find this 10 millimeter bolt. And it's sort of inside of this, you know, U channel. You got the squared off piece here. And of course on the back side. So this piece right here is the one, or this 10 millimeter is the one that you're looking to uh, remove. And I used a socket. Uh, you might be able to use one of those 10 millimeter ratchet box ends. Um, I was able to use that to get it started threaded back in, but uh, because of this little lip right here, you might need to use a socket. Uh, that's, that's what I did thing useful to note is to sort of see how you've got this clamp which goes all the way around the hose and it's being squeezed and bolted to this assembly right here so when you're going to reassemble it you know you can't really see it from on above so just kind of understand how it works you squeeze this together you put it on the back side of the panel the front of the car is over here to the left and then you bring the bolt in from the rear and squeeze the the uh, um, the clamp or the uh, bracket here to this uh, mount mounting right here. Okay, when you're putting the top uh, clamp back in, you only have room for one hand back there. Trying to hold the hose, trying to hold this rubber gasket, grommet, whatever bushing and this metal clamp in place with one hand and thread the 10 millimeter is ridiculously impossible so what i did was i drilled two little holes in the bushing and zip tied this so that i can open this up 
you know, and I can reach behind there and come up from underneath, squeeze it down, and then come out, get the 10 millimeter and try and get it threaded. So one of the things I tried here at the end was I went out and got one of these, um, I don't know, you know, drill bit, 10 millimeter uh, all in one socket thing for your drill. And when I was coming in from behind, I was able to use it like a screwdriver because you know, this is a hex so your fingers can grip it and you could turn it in like a screwdriver so that when you're screwing that 10 millimeter in from behind, you know, it's, it's a little more usable. Then you take that out, put your big ratchet in to, you know, torque it down. So those are some things to consider trying to get this thing back in. Okay, some final thoughts. Uh, if you assume this is over on the driver's side and this is over on the passenger side and this is roughly in the middle. Uh, just a couple thoughts. At first, I thought doing the approach that the TRQ video said would be best, just get the hose, because all of the leakage on, in my situation was occurring over here. There was no, there was no oil, come, no steering fluid coming out of on this tube or anything. So I thought, okay, you know, I'll put my wrench here, my wrench here, and I'll open this up, take the clamp off, which was right about here, take this clamp off, and then disconnect the sensor and take out this, uh, whatever, bozo bolt or whatever they call them. I don't know what they're called. That did not work. I, I, I could not get this loose. I'm not saying you can't, but I couldn't get it loose. Combination of having to put two hands up in there with two wrenches and going counter, you know, one clockwise, one counterclockwise, whatever. I could not break this loose. And it does feel like it's stripped. So that's probably part of the problem. What I found was accessing this was not any harder. And because this was mounted into a block, I didn't have to hold it. I, all I had to do was, you know, lefty loosey and pop that out. Now there's no instructions in the kit, but there is a small rubber um, gasket or uh, O-ring that comes in the kit here that you put on here and there are two uh, you'll see in the videos you'll see there are two brass or, or copper crush rings that go on either side here that that um, bolt goes through and here is where you're going to remove in the the old pressure sensor and of course insert it into the new one now the last couple of things there is a there was a definite on this Duralast. There was a metal like bracket that you put the rubber um, gasket around, and then the clamp. And this is the one that's up toward the top, where you have to come in from above. Uh, this one, the the crimps are right here, right here, and right here. And then there's this big gap before you get to the you know the hex head here. The rubber gasket. I had to. Uh, on the Duralast, there was this. This was the constant width, so there basically the rubber gasket didn't fit. So I had to trim some of the excess that fills in this gap right here. I had to trim that out in order for the gasket that comes off of here uh, to fit on the new Duralast. And once I did that, everything worked. Um, sort of last thing is when you lay out the new one, make sure you kind of lay it out here on the table and get all the stuff oriented properly, right? The, for example, the bracket that goes here is on this side, not this side, right? So get it, get it lined up properly up here. The bracket here is, goes up, right? The bracket over here. Well, this one, you just manhandle it into position. But um, in practice, once you solve the problem of getting underneath the car, you don't have to have orangutan arms to reach over. You just come over and undo this. Um, take the 10 millimeter bolt that's on the bracket here. Take it off. Take the 10 millimeter bolt from above. Remove the 24 millimeter um, bolt that connects it to the pump. 
disconnect the sensor and pull this hose assembly out and you know salvage the sensor put the new o-ring here insert the uh put the gaskets here and here for your clamps and then you know thread it back in and start in here you know secure this first well at least the way i did it is i secured that that way it was free to move around and i could get it aligned uh, once that was snugged up i came over here and the bracket that's got uh, that's holding this in place I put that 10 millimeter screw back in. So now this assembly here was secured. Then I came over here and I put my sensor in and I reconnected this. And then the last thing I did was come up top and you know pull it, or, pull it around and get that clamp in and put the 10 millimeter above. The last thing to note is that um, in the, most of the videos you're going to see referencing metrics like 24 millimeters, 19, 14s, etc., 10s. Um, when you, the Duralast kit, these are not metric. These hex heads here, 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 they are not metric. They are SAE US uh, sizing. So the threads are correct. In other words, when you start to stick this thing back and you're like, uh oh, this nothing fits because my wrenches don't work. Um, the threads actually go back in without any trouble. Uh, of course, this doesn't have any threads. This is gonna be using that 24 millimeter bolt to be reassembled. And you don't really, you do need to tighten this down before you re uh, you know, insert it. Cause when you get it in your package, this, this piece will be loose so you'll have to assemble this piece right here uh so you'll that's where you'll first notice it you'll be like okay wait a minute the sizes here are wrong yes the sizes are different here just like this um the connector right here on the duralast is slightly different right here but the actual threading which count is what matters in the one piece right here this threading will go into the block even though this is not metric on its hex head okay that's it for now and good luck if you try this again be safe uh, i recommend the, the lift above any other uh, technique please be careful if you use the uh, you know if you use the the jack stands